Hey, Internet. Last year, when I reviewed 2015, I said that it had been a banner year for me. I had done a lot of traveling and embarked on some journeys that were sure to change my life in 2016. But when I said those things and I made the goals that I made, I really had no idea what the next year had in store. I want to say that 2016 was a banner year as well. I mean, sure, I hit some challenges and some roadblocks, and there were definitely tears and struggles. But despite what the memes say about a large portion of the world, 2016 was a success for me because I'm different now than I was when it started and I've grown and learned things. 2016 started with my preparing to move away. I bought a mattress and packed my things and said goodbye to the shore, but not without making some silly videos and hunting a ghost cat first. The first few days in my new home were spent shut in because of a blizzard that dropped over two feet of snow. But once that cleared up, I got to meet my first ever internet friend, Christina, and we made some videos in DC. As I settled down in my new place, I still traveled around to spend time with my family and friends. But then the challenges began. I went vegetarian for the month of March. I had some existential crises, participated in Dawn's bachelorette party, snuggled some new kittens, and spent three days on my longest hike ever, and most rewarding. April was simultaneously an awesome and terrible month. I decided once again to make a video every day for 30 days and succeeded, though the stress got to me multiple times as I had to juggle between being involved in a car accident, voting in my first ever primary, and being a part of Dawn's beautiful wedding. But still, things were just beginning. At the start of May, I went into DC to watch Tessa Violet, Dodie Clark, Rusty Clanton, and John Cozart perform an amazing show. Then Andy, Rachel, and I went to New York City for the weekend to see Waitress. I got to see my friend Sam, do faces with my nieces, go to one of Rachel's shows, and then at the end of the month, I found out that I was going to be going to VidCon. June became a whirlwind of me trying to get ready for that trip as I cut my hair, hung out with Ashley, went to the beach, and did more faces. Then it was time to jump on a flight across the country to meet a bunch of people I had never met before. VidCon was a blast, and I learned so many things while I was there. I don't think I'll ever be able to express how thankful I am for all of the people who made that trip possible and awesome. Awesome. After returning from California, I almost immediately jumped in a car to travel five hours to Pittsburgh to spend the 4th of July weekend with my family, an annual tradition. But after that, July kind of hit a low. That was until I traveled to DC to meet up with Chloe, Josh, JT, and Drew for our Arondanaut adventure. As an additional boost, I got to go visit Dawn in Durham and I watched all three of the Lord of the Rings movies for the first time. Life picked up again as August rolled in with a trip to visit Greg in Silver Spring, a Penny Pistol Solero show, Kitty and Beach Time, a pokey walk in Annapolis, and a road trip with Ashley to Nashville. Spending so much time with Ashley and having such a cool experience together was another really high point of my year. At the end of August, grad school became more intense and it was time for my graduate assistant position to pick up a little bit as I had my first experience as a college instructor. In September, I met a mystery dog that showed up in my room one morning, spent some time camping out at the farm, and took my last trip of the season to the beach with Andy. I stopped drinking coffee during October which might have been one of the worst decisions of the year, but I tried to make the best of it by spending time with Andy, and of course, Suki. I took my first solo hike, failed at dyeing my hair, went to New York City again with my family to see Holiday Inn. I carved pumpkins with Ashley. We had our annual Halloween party with the family. I visited Blackwater Wildlife Refuge, and I voted in my first ever general election. In November, a bunch of us went to DC for one of Rachel's shows, and then we threw Andy a going away party. I got to go on my first high school trip as a chaperone. I met up with some of my old friends for Thanksgiving, and I spent a lot of time with my cats and my family. Rounding out the year, in December, I made a video every day for Vlogmas. I went to DC with some friends. I hunted for a Christmas tree. I watched quite a bit of the p for a live stream. I met up with some friends in Baltimore, said goodbye to Andy as he left for Seattle, went on another field trip, celebrated Christmas with the people that I I love, and then took a plane to Missoula, Montana to meet up with some new friends and help out with a New Year's Eve live stream. I ended my year over 2,000 miles away from where it started, and I traveled several thousand more miles in between. Pretty good for a year where I predicted there would be little to no traveling. When I started 2016, I gave myself a few goals. These were to do more things alone, to learn to live on a budget, to take better care of myself and to be healthier, and to be a better friend. 
I think I'm pretty happy with what I accomplished in those areas this year. I can identify where I made progress and that motivates me to keep going with them this year. In her most recent video, my friend Nicole talked about framing the new year with sort of a theme word. The idea is to come up with a word or a mantra to keep yourself on track throughout the year and align yourself with your goals. For her, the word was focus. I really like this idea and I've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out what word works best for my goals this year. One of Nicole's commenters suggested coming up with a word map of a couple different words instead of just using a single word, and I think that's probably what's gonna work best for me currently. My main word would be passion. I wanna make sure to put my passion into everything that I'm doing this year and to use that passion as a motivator. Surrounding the main word of passion, I think I'd also like to use the word intent, and I'm gonna steal a little bit from Nicole and also use focus. One thing that I've struggled with in the past is not keeping myself on track with my goals and letting myself get distracted. This year, I wanna make choices with a purpose, thus intent, and to focus on that purpose as I follow through with the choices that I make. My final word in the map is risk. There are times when I've made choices because it is the easier and less scary option instead of going after what I really want. This year, I wanna to continue to push myself and get out of my comfort zone. 2016 taught me that taking risks can pay off in big ways, so I wanna make sure not to let fear get in the way of me achieving what I want to achieve. Already this year, I have some pretty awesome things lined up. In February, I'm going to be going to Boston for NerdCon Nerdfighteria, and then at the end of June, I'm going to be traveling out west to go to Seattle and Portland, and then eventually all the way back down to Anaheim for my second year at VidCon. Most notably of all of my plans, however, is that in May, I will be graduating with my master's degree and stepping into the next chapter of my life. At this point, the waters are still very murky, but I think I can guarantee that 2017 is going to be another year of huge changes and adventures. There are a lot of scary unknowns out there for myself, for my country, and for the entire world, but I am committed to making 2017 the best that it can be and to coming out the other side better than I am now. Let me know down in the comments, what are your goals for 2017? Do you have any theme words chosen? Make sure to go and watch Nicole's video on this topic. I'll link it in the cards and in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all later.